Hey guys! Today we're going to be talking about scatter plots. By the end of our video, I'd like for you to be able to uh, understand what a scatter plot is. I'd like for you to be able to make a scatter plot. And I'd like for you to be able to describe a scatter plot that you see um, using mathematical vocabulary. Now, if you haven't already watched our first video, uh, please go back and do that before you dive into this one, okay? Because a lot of the things that we're going to be talking about in this video rely on previous knowledge from our first video. So the, the, it is important to watch these in order. I also want to remind you before we begin to have your notes page ready and to be filling those in as we go along. Okay, the beauty of these videos is that you can watch them at your own pace. So if you feel like it's moving a little too fast, remember I only have 15 minutes, so I'm going to be kind of racing through. Go back and watch them again. Sure, uh, be sure to press pause anytime you need to, to, be, to keep up with your notes. Okay, and let's get started. What's a scatter plot? Well, a scatter plot is a type of graph that uses plotted points to show patterns in bivariate data. Okay, a quick reminder, when you see words in red like this, it's because they correspond to a blank in your notes, so that you should be copying that down into your notes. Okay, so here's our example of a scatter plot. Anytime you're, you're look, you find a scatter plot, you're going to do the same thing you do when you look at any graph, which is you're going to check out the title. Right, that might seem really obvious, but a lot of people miss at that. Part. So we're actually looking at Old Faithful eruptions, right? And if you're not familiar with Old Faithful, here's a picture of it. It's a geyser in Wyoming in Yellowstone National Park, and it gets its name because it is very faithful in the way that it erupts. Um, it's very reliable and predictable. And this scatter plot shows data collected from Old Faithful eruptions, right? We are looking at a bivariate data set, which means that we have two variables. Okay, that was part of our previous video. Um, so we have an X value and a Y value, right? And so that we have an X and Y axis, and both of those axes are labeled, right? So we're looking at the duration of an eruption, or how long an eruption lasts, and the amount of time you have to wait between eruptions. Okay, so when we uh, take a look at our actual scatter plot here, each one of these points represents an eruption. Right, so this particular point right here is um, documenting an eruption that lasted just over five minutes, and after that eruption, it was almost an hour and forty minutes until it erupted again. Okay, um, this particular point right here is talking about an eruption that lasted about two and a half minutes, almost two and a half minutes, and after that eruption, there was just over 50 minutes before the next eruption occurred. Okay, so as we look at this scatter plot, it's starting to tell us a story. I see two real clusters of data here emerging. Okay, I see this cluster of points here of short eruptions, and when it, when these eruptions are short, meaning you know less than two and a half or three minutes, generally the amount of time that you have to wait until the next one is also shorter. Okay, but when the eruption is longer, when the eruption lasts, you know, four minutes or more, then you're going to have to wait longer until the next eruption occurs. All right, so the longer the eruption, the longer you wait until the next one, and the shorter the eruption, the less time you have to wait until the next one. Okay, so that's what this, this scatter plot is telling us. Now, you might notice this blue line here, and we're really going to dive into that in our next video, okay, but we're not going to worry about it today. Right? So the whole point of this scatter plot is to show the relationship between the amount of time that the Old Faithful erupts and how long you have to wait between eruptions. Okay? And the whole point of a scatter plot is to show those relationships, or what we'll call correlations. Okay? So a correlation is an association or in a relationship between quantities, right? Again, on our Old Faithful uh, scatter plot here, where there's a relationship or a correlation between how long an eruption lasts and the how long you have to wait till the next one. Okay, now correlation can have some different features. A correlation can be either linear or nonlinear. It can be either strong or weak, and it can be positive or negative, right? Um, we're going to take a look at that. Whoops, looks like my slide's having a little issue here. We'll just proceed anyway. Like I said, we, a, a correlation can be linear, meaning that it, there it is, it forms a straight line, 
or it can be nonlinear, meaning that it does not form a straight line. Okay, that comes right out of our first video, so go back and watch that one if you need to. All right, so um, the correlation could also be uh, strong, meaning that all the points are really closely concentrated together, or a correlation can be weak, meaning they're further apart, the points are more scattered. Okay, we'll see some examples of that. For now, just make sure that you're copying these down into your notes so that you have a reference to look back to if you need it. Okay, we can also talk about the slope of a correlation. We can have a positive correlation and we can have a negative correlation. All right, and in a positive correlation, as the x value increases, the y value also increases. Okay, and it creates a pattern that kind of goes, looks like this, where the dots are moving up to the right. All right, and a negative correlation, as the x increases, y decreases. So as x is getting larger, y is getting smaller, and that creates this pattern or graph that where all the dots kind of seem to be moving down to the bottom right corner. Okay, I kind of think of this as forward slash and back slash, right? Forward, it's positive, right? Moving forward, and if you're moving backward, and negative. Anyway, um, if you don't see any of these features, if none of these things apply, there's no pattern at all, you're looking at a graph that is not showing a correlation, and we'll see an example of that as well. All right, let's jump into our first example. All right, you're to go ahead and turn your notes page over because you're actually going to be constructing scatter plots right along with me. Again, remember, I'm going to be moving kind of quickly, so if you need to pause, please do so. Okay, if you need to go back and watch it over again, that would be please uh, please do that okay so our first example is going to be relating the number of missing assignments to students report card grades okay hopefully as eighth graders you're well aware by now that the more assignments you're missing the lower your grade is going to be okay so we know that there's a relationship between those two things but let's see what this graph looks like all right we have our our Title. We have our axes labeled. Here's our x-axis, the number of missing assignments that corresponds with our x value. All right, and our y-axis, the report card grade, corresponds with our y value. And each one of these points in our data series is going to represent one particular student. Okay, so this particular student has zero missing assignments. Awesome student is current in all their work, and the average of the 81. Okay, now there's a student who's missing one assignment who has a 74. So I'll plot the point there. Again, I'd like for you to plot these points in your notes as we go. All right, here's a student who's missing one assignment who has an average of a 67. Okay, we have a student who's missing two assignments who has a 59. Another student with no missing work has a 93. A student with four missing, missing grades has a 36. And a student with one missing grade has a 70. All right, so if we check out how these dots are distributed here, we'll see that they don't form this perfect line. A lot of people, the big misconception about scatter plots is that students think that they need to connect the dots on these, and that isn't, that's not true. Okay, so we're not playing connect the dots here, but we are looking about the, uh, at the general pattern that the dots are forming. Okay, if you imagine that I had this broad highlighter and I could just kind of draw over all of these dots, I could probably catch them all right with with on a line um, and so the if we take the, uh, all the all the dots seem to be kind of following this linear pattern okay it's showing a linear relationship now I could also say in terms of strength that this correlation is strong there's a strong correlation between missing assignments and report card grades and I say that because these dots are clustered kind of pretty closely together again with that imaginary highlighter um, I could kind of catch them all in one in, in one mark right so that's that's indicative of a strong correlation now, as far as slope, we would say that the slope is negative because as my x values are getting larger, my y values are getting smaller. Okay, as the number of missing assignments increases, the grade decreases. Right, so that's an example of a negative correlation. The line seems to be moving down here. 
right? And we could uh, go ahead and predict that a person who, was, who had five missing assignments would probably have an even lower grade and that the grade would just get lower and lower and lower as the number of missing assignments increases. Now when I say summary, what I'd like for you to do is just go ahead and put that into words, right? Use words to describe what you're seeing in the graph. And the graph is telling us here that students with more missing assignments tend to have lower grades than students with less missing assignments, okay? Let's look at our next example. Right, in this example, we're comparing the side length of a figure uh, to the figure's volume, okay? And hopefully you remember that with volume, uh, you, you your multiple, or we're specifically talking about volume of a cube. Sorry, I didn't have room to put it up there. We're talking about volume of a cube. And so volume is, is uh, caused by side length, right? The formula is side cubed, side times side times side. So as the side length increases, so too will the volume. Right? But we can go ahead and make a scatter plot of this. When the, vol when the side length is 1, then to find volume, we do 1 times 1 times 1, which gives us 1. When the side length is 2, that's 2 times 2 times 2, which gives us 8. All right, a, cu a cube with a side length of 3 has a volume of 27. A cube with a side length of 4 has a volume of 64. And a 5 cubed is 125. So in this one, there is, uh, there is a direct causal relationship, right, between side length and volume. And so what we have is this perfect direct correlation. Whereas, you know, even though I just told you that scatter plots aren't about connecting dots, and this one we actually could because there is this perfect causal relationship. Now, if we connected these dots, what we would get is not a straight line, but a curve. And that's because this relationship is nonlinear. Okay. Now, in terms of correlation, this one is very, very strong. Okay, um, the we we know that the side length is actually causing the volume, right? So that's not always the case. Um, the, the correlations that we're looking for are not the same as causation, but in this case, it. it it is showing a very, very strong relationship. And the slope, we could say, is positive. Again, we'll see nonlinear relationships where it's, a, you can, you can, it's hard to describe a slope. Um, but in this case, we'll say that it's positive because for sure, as our side length is increasing, so too is our volume. Okay, And that's how we're going to summarize this relationship here. All right, moving on to our next example. We have um, a scatter plot that's go of, uh, that relates the amount of money that a person earns to the number of hours that a person works. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and plot these points. There's a person who worked one hour. Whoa, a person who worked one hour who uh, made twenty-five dollars. Two hours, fifty dollars. Three hours, twenty-four dollars. Four hours, fifty dollars. And each one of these represents a person, right? This person worked five hours and made a hundred dollars. Another person made made hundred and fifty dollars in five hours. Six hours, ninety dollars. Six hours, one fifteen. All right. So if we look at how these dots are distributed, how these points are distributed, um, maybe you'll see that um, again. If you could imagine that you need a broader highlighter, right? But if you kind of try to draw a line to catch all of these, um, it does form kind of a line that goes up like this, right? This is a linear relationship. However, this is an example of a weak correlation, all right? There's not, um, the, there's more space between the dots. They're not so closely con concentrated together. And it is positive, all right? As the number of hours worked increases, so too do the earnings, all right? So um, that's how we're going to summarize this. So this is an example of a, of a weak linear uh, correlation, and we could also call it a positive correlation. All right, for our next example, here we have the number of pets owned and the height of a student in inches. Okay, um, and you're probably going to want to pause and go through this, but I'm just about out of time, so I'm just going to kind of show you what this looks like and tell you this is an example of a no correlation. As you might expect, there's really no relationship between the number of pets you own and how tall you grow, and our graph is definitely showing that, okay, that there does not appear to be a relationship between the number of pets and the height, okay, and so there are, our dots aren't 
that moving in any particular direction and we couldn't use any of our vocabulary to describe this. All right, so you survived. You made it to the end of the video. I hope you can construct a scatter plot and describe it. Okay, um, be sure to take the quiz and keep up with your notes.